Today we're going to go over cost, volume, profit. Now this is uh, a very important part of Accounting 240 because lots of businesses want to know what their break-even point is, what their costs are, trying to control their costs to increase their profit. But before we get into the actual calculations, what we need to do is understand costs and how they behave. So the chapter starts off by talking about variable costs, fixed costs, step pattern costs, and uh, I've got the last one, and mixed costs. There we go. Variable costs, hopefully, you guys remember from previous business classes, variable costs vary in proportion to however many products we're producing. So if we're producing, let's say it's a tent, if we're producing a tent, the materials that go into the tent are variable cost because we have to purchase enough materials for each tent. So if the material to go into the tent costs, let's say $20, if we produce one tent, then we have to buy $20 worth of materials. If we produce two tents, we have to purchase $40 worth of materials. It varies depending on some sort of volume. Okay? So if you're looking at a graph and this were the dollar and then this were the activity or units, a variable cost would look like that. It increases in direct proportion to the activity. Well, the next type of cost is a fixed cost. Fixed costs don't change depending on volume or activity. So what would happen is this cost would be the same. Let's say that our rental, we're renting some space to produce our tents. Let's say the monthly rent is $5,000 a month. Well, if the rent is $5,000 a month, it doesn't matter if we make one tent or a thousand tents, the cost is $5,000 a month. It's not going to change. So you can see here, we can really take advantage of fixed costs. It can really bring the cost of our product down. If we can produce lots of tents, well, the fixed cost is set. It's not going to change. So if we make just one tent, guess what happens to this $5,000? It goes into that one tent. But if we produce a thousand tents, then what happens? Well, if we take a thousand, I mean $5,000 divided by a thousand tents, that means we're only going to allocate $5 to each tent. So you can see here that we have an incentive to try and produce as many tents as we can. Now you've got to be careful because what can happen? If there's not sufficient demand for the tents, you can be in a lot of trouble. So you want to produce as many tents as possible, but at the same time be careful that you can sell those tents. Because if you produce all these tents and you can't sell them all, well then you've got all these other costs that went into them. Materials and labor and overhead. Okay, so we've gone over variable costs, we've gone over fixed costs. Now you're going to want to look in your textbook also, because your textbook does a very good job of explaining this, and it has a lot of examples too. Okay, the next one we want to look at is called a step cost. Now a step cost is a little bit different. Let's say that where we produce our tents, we have a supervisor. And this supervisor makes, let's say, $30,000 a year. Well, a supervisor who's supervising the production of the tent can only supervise so much. And once the company grows to a certain size, we have to hire another supervisor. So you can see, I, hopefully, where I'm going here. The one supervisor, his salary or her salary is $30,000. Okay? Well, it depends. You know, if we only produce 500 or 600 or 1,000 tents, that supervisor can supervise that work. But if we start manufacturing maybe 2,000 or 3,000 tents, we have to hire another supervisor. So it jumps up to two supervisors, which would be 60,000. And at some point, if we start manufacturing more and more tents, we may have to hire a third supervisor. So I think you can see why they call this the step pattern cost, because it's in a step, depending on the volume. It's fixed in this range. But as we pass this range, then it's fixed at this point for that section. Okay, so now we've gone over three of our costs. And the last cost that we're going to go over today is the mixed cost. Now, 
remember our variable cost started here and went up. A mixed cost isn't going to start in the corner. It's going to start somewhere up here. We're going to have a fixed portion. So here's the fixed amount. And then from that fixed amount, we have a variable part, variable part that continues forward. I'm sorry. Yes, a variable part that will continue forward. So here is our fixed component, everything below that line. And then here is our variable component, everything between the fixed and this line at the top. So what type of cost could be a mixed cost? Well, your cell phone bill, that's a mixed cost. If you didn't use your cell phone at all, what would happen? Would you still get a bill? Yes, you would still get a bill. If you go over your text messaging or your minutes, what happens? Well, then you've got a variable cost. Maybe it's 20 cents a minute that you go over. But whatever you go over, there's a variable cost associated with that. Oftentimes with rent, if you're renting like in a strip mall or a place like that, what they do is they'll charge you a rent, a fixed amount, maybe $1,000 a month, and then on top of that, they'll charge you a percentage of your revenues. That's not unusual. But if that's the case, then you'd have a mixed cost because you'd have your fixed cost and then the variable portion that's associated with, uh, in this case, in my example, your revenue. Okay, so we've gone over the four costs. This cost here is a little bit more difficult to figure out. Uh, the textbook goes over different ways to figure out how you calculate your mixed cost because in this chapter, we have to take all of our costs and we have to determine how much are variable, how much are fixed. Well, the variable are variable, the fixed are fixed. The step pattern, well, they're fixed in their specific categories and their specific levels, so we can look at those and we know that those are fixed costs. But the mixed, we have to divide these up between fixed and variable. So how do we go about doing that? Well, you can do a method called the visual fit. You can do a method called, and sometimes they call this one um, also the scatter graph. So I think your textbook calls it scatter graph. So let's put that down. Scatter graph approach. And then also we've got, um, no, I'm sorry. I'm wrong here. We've got our visual fit. Oh yes, the scatter graph, and then the high-low method. I wrote down wrong in my notes, I apologize. Okay, the scatter graph method, what you're doing is you're going to look, let me erase this here, you're going to measure what's taken place over the last little while with this cost. So maybe the costs are going like this. So what you're going to do is you're going to visually try and fit a line that will best go through all those dots. And this here would be probably the best visual fit. So you would see, well, where is this, the fixed component? And then you can measure what the variable portion would be also. So that would be a scatter graph where you're putting the dots in there and then you're visually fitting the line in. The high-low method would take your high one, your low one, and then mathematically between those two figure out what the variable and fixed component would be. And your textbook does a good job, so we really don't have time in this video for me to go over that. Okay. There's also regression analysis, which is a statistical method that you plug all these numbers into basically a software package, and it would tell you the actual fixed and variable based on those points that you put in there. Okay, so that's, that's it for this chapter, well, for this part of the chapter. I'm going to do another video, and the next video is going to actually go into the actual cost, volume, profit analysis. Now, we've done that before in Chapter 1. Just briefly, we touched upon it. And your first test actually had a problem that dealt with break-even. So we're going to expand on that in this chapter, really understand what break-even is, how we calculate it, look at two different methods to calculate break-even, and also we're going to be looking at such things as target profit analysis. But we have to start with the variable and fixed costs first because we have to get those broken down so we know that, so that we can then calculate what our break-even is in these other cost volume profit analysis problems. All right, good luck.